Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon, and this week we're going to make a giant ice cream Snickers bar. So let's start by studying a little one. Obviously, it has chocolate on the outside, we can see that. And if you cut into it, we can see there we've got ice cream down the bottom and peanuts and caramel up the top. Just let me dissect this into all the pieces so we can taste each component on its own. The ice cream is slightly off white and it does taste like vanilla ice cream but it has a very slight nutty taste to it. I'm not sure if that's actually from the ice cream or if it's just from the fact that it's been sitting next to the peanuts in the bar but I think we can get away with just using vanilla ice cream because my ice cream bowl will only make one litre at a time and we're going to need way more than that for this. The chocolate itself is a milk chocolate. It's probably also had a lot of extra fat added to it just to make it easier to get that thin coat when you're pouring it over ice cream. But with our big one, we can get away with a slightly thicker coat. So we're just going to use straight, normal, delicious milk chocolate. Now the bit I am really interested in is the caramel. Once it is frozen, it is quite thick, but now you can see when it's defrosted, it's of course softer. It's definitely salted in flavor, so we're gonna to have to add some salt in there too. Now I don't have a container that's the right size, so I'm gonna use a cardboard box. For this length, it will be the right height, but this is a little bit wider than it should be if we were making it in proportion, but I don't think anyone's gonna care if they get a little bit of extra ice cream Snickers. So I'm just gonna line that with some non-stick baking paper and we're ready to start. Tip your ice cream out of the container and cut big chunks out of it and add that into your box. Make sure you fill up all the little gaps and then smooth off the top. And then of course that's got to go back in the freezer or it will melt. For the yummy caramel part, we're going to need peanuts, obviously, glucose syrup, sugar, milk, and cream. And I'll put all these recipe quantities on the howtocookthat.net website for you in grams and ounces and cups. And there's a link to that below. Add the cream, milk, and the glucose syrup into the pan with the sugar. Once you've got all of that in, you want to heat it over high heat. Now, I like to stir it at first just to make sure all the sugar is dissolved. And then you want to wash down the sides of the pan using a wet pastry brush. This just gets off any little sugar crystals that might have splashed up onto the sides. And if you don't get them off, it can make it crystallize out at the end. So instead of having a nice smooth caramel, you end up with like a fudge, which is definitely not what we want. Add a candy thermometer and make sure it's not touching the bottom of the pan and let that boil unstirred until it reaches about 110 degrees. You can take it off the heat at 105 if you want a softer caramel but I want mine a little bit chewy. Remove it from the heat and add in those peanuts and stir those through. That caramel color looks a little bit pale compared to what was in the actual Snickers so I'm going to add a little bit of brown food coloring to make it look a bit deeper. Then stick the whole pan in a sink of cold water to cool it down quickly. It looks like a big pot of baked beans at the moment. If you want to test the consistency of your caramel, you can put some of it into a bowl and then freeze it to see how thick it will be. If it's too thick, you can just stir in some extra cream at this stage. Mine is quite firm when it's frozen, but I quite like it, that texture. So I'm going to leave it just like that. If you want it like it is in the bars, add a little bit more cream to that or only heat it to 105. Once it's cooled to room temperature, you can spoon that over the ice cream. Yum. Look at all that caramel and peanuts. Mm. Have I ever told you about the time when I was a teenager and I went out for a run and when I came home, I remember saying to my mum, it feels like I've been stung by a bee in the back of my throat. Now, obviously I hadn't because I would have known if I'd swallowed a bee, but that's what it felt like. And mum said, I'll go have a lie down. And so I did. And a little while later I came out and I just had blotches all over me, like red blotches. My whole head was swelling. My 
tongue was so swollen that I couldn't talk properly and I was finding it hard to breathe and they rushed me down to hospital and obviously I was having an anaphylactic reaction to something but they didn't know what it was and the same thing happened several times over the next few years and to cut a long story short after seeing many doctors and specialists who had no idea what was going on I eventually saw a top immunologist who told me I had food dependent exercise induced anaphylaxis quite a mouthful there <laughs> and what that means is basically you need a trigger food which for me is peanuts plus exercise and then you'll get the anaphylactic reaction so if you don't have the food and you exercise you're fine if you have the food and you don't exercise you're fine but if you have those two together then you're going to not be able to breathe and need to go to hospital so <laughs> for me if I eat some of this Snickers I won't be able to exercise for the next 24 hours so that's my excuse if any of you have weird allergies and you're an incredibly rare person too which just means it's going to take ages to get diagnosed properly tell me about it in the comments I'd like to hear about it and commiserate with you Put that back in the freezer for at least a few hours, then spread out some chocolate. I'm not bothering to temper this because it's going to go in the freezer so we don't need to. And then put that big slab of ice cream and caramel on top. Use a spatula to quickly spread the chocolate up the sides all the way up as far as you can now this is going to set really quickly obviously because of the cold ice cream so you need to work fairly fast and just keep spreading that up once all the sides are done pour more chocolate on top and spread it out all over and then you'll need to of course put this back in the freezer so that your ice cream stays frozen and doesn't start to melt now it's time to wrap it up put it on some cellophane Oh, far out, that's heavy. I can't get my fingers out. Ow, got it. Okay, now wrap the cellophane around first. I'm using cellophane because I don't want the ice cream drips on the paper to make it go soggy once we start cutting it. So I thought I'll put the plastic on first. Once you've done that layer, then wrap around some wrapping paper and tape it into place. Put some glue inside each end and squash the ends together so that it looks like the end of a chocolate bar wrapper. Then print a label and use some glue to stick it on top. Make sure you put ice cream bars so people know to store it in the freezer. And then cut a zigzag pattern out of each end. And there you have a giant Snickers ice cream bar. That wasn't too hard to make in the end. And it looks pretty impressive. And it weighs a whopping 8.7 kilograms or 19 pounds. So definitely one that you would want to share. Let's check what that looks like on the inside. Yum. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here for more giant things, here for more minis and here for gadgets. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.